Welcome, everybody, to the Couple Nurses Podcast with your host, Matt Trotrick, and myself, Peter Fenura. This is a podcast where we tackle current health news and hot nurse topics, one conversation at a time. And guys, we've got a great episode in store for you, but let me start with the, with the, the beginnings, with the breadcrumbs. Make sure to follow us, give us a good rating, give us a five stars, leave us a comment. If you're on YouTube, thank you for being here on YouTube. Hit the little bell, subscribe. And if you are on YouTube, there is this fine piece of literature right in front of us that you might be asking what it is, and we'll discuss it here in a moment. But thank you guys for your support. We're here, LA. Thank you for the breadcrumbs, bro. So in this episode, we're going to discuss the NCLEX on how to pass it, the exact steps that you need on your success, strategies, and we'll also explain studying and planning for actually taking the NCLEX. So if you're a nursing student, get ready because this is an episode you will not want to miss. You will not want to miss. I'm going to repeat that throughout this episode. And go for it. I was just going to say, man, just looking at this and it being in front of us, like we put a lot of work into it. It's took us probably half a year. From the beginning of COVID. Beginning of COVID, on and off, just taking time and making a Google Doc and putting notes in and looking over literature. And when we're in nursing school, I, this is one thing I wanted. I wanted one piece of content that was able to capture everything, all the material that could potentially be on the NCLEX. And it was hard to find that one study tool. It was a big struggle because there's so many companies out there that push their separate agendas, push their strategies, but nothing ever summarized like the whole NCLEX What's going to be on there? Everyone gave you like these little bits of pieces like Kaplan and all the New World, U World, all, all those things. They gave you a little bit of information, but there was nothing that was that had everything that was cohesive. So initially, we wanted the study guide to be like maybe like 50 pages, 100 pages tops, ended up being like 162, 163. So this is like, this is like a lot of reading to do. And we summarized that, we found, summarized it very well. Like in the beginning, we wrote it out. It was like 50 pages, did some edits. We thought we needed to add more things, so we added them because we don't want to release like a study guide that's not going to have all the bells and whistles to it, right? right? We obviously don't have a cubing for you guys. That you have to, have to get somewhere else. But the content material and the rationales and why certain questions are, uh, why certain answers are wrong and why other ones are right, you're going to find in this book. It's a great resource. It's I a great resource. We break everything down for you. We give you more tips, more in-depth tips. You're going to learn more from this study guide than you're going to know from this podcast episode just for the sake of time. Because you could fill a lot of information in 106 pages compared to a 30, 40 minute episode. I agree with you, man. Very good selling point. And if you guys want to know more about this or where to grab a copy, your PDF file, just go on the cupofnurses.com and you'll find it there. Okay. So normally the NCLEX guide is a minimum of 75 questions and a max of 265 and you have six hours to take it. But COVID-19 and the impacts of NCLEX. So that kind of changed and yes, you have to wear a mask and you have to ensure there's social distancing. But what actually changed with the test material itself? So after September 30th, 2020, there's a minimum of 75 questions still, but the max of 145. So it's still the same difficulty to pass the NCLEX. There's just less time to take it. So ultimately didn't change much. You, t- you technically have 60 questions to pass and then they give you 15 pre-test questions for this computer program, this cat, this computerized testing to figure out where you are and where you stand to start giving you those awesome questions to challenge you. Yeah. So your next steps. So obviously before you take the NCLEX, you have to pass nursing school. There's no, there's no prerequisite besides passing nursing school. So once you pass nursing school, you're going to need to contact your nursing regulatory body. You're going to need to register there and pay a fee. And after that, you're going to be allowed to go into Pearson and they're going to be the ones that are going to guide you through your text taking process, right? Is that how it works? Yeah. And and for me, I had a letter that came in the mail finally after I graduated. And that's when I was able to register on Pearson, see what test taking uh, centers are available for to take the test. Registered, I believe, two months in advance is what I did and just studied away, man. Yeah, you have 90 days from that email that you get that says that you're allowed to test. You have yeah. 90 days from that day that you get the email. And a lot of people ask, um, do you have to, let's say if you live in Illinois, let's say you live in Chicago, do you have to take the NCLEX exam in Chicago and in Illinois? No, you could you could go to a different state. Let's say you were planning a vacation and you want to take the NCLEX on your vacation. Doesn't sound, sound fun, but hey, maybe your family plan a vacation for you to go in, in July. And guess what? That's when your, your testing date is, is going to be July. So you could go to that state. You could take the NCLEX in that state. You, you're allowed to do that. You don't have to take the exam in the state that you are a resident in. They just want you to pass. That's all. They don't care where you do it at. Yeah. Which, and, is, which is pretty good. And ultimately, they want your money, man, because that's mm-hmm. what it comes down to. Yeah. It sucks. You're, yeah, you're paying Pearson and you're paying the 
the um, nursing regulatory body, that, body that is yeah. in your county or, or however or your state or how they, they, they do yeah. that. So if you're wondering what is the NCLEX, you've graduated nursing school and as far as you know, you can't celebrate yet because the hardest part is just about to come. This is that huge milestone that you've been you've been talking about, you've been hearing about all of nursing school and it's time to study and pass for NCLEX. So the NCLEX actually stands for the National Council of Licensure Examination. It is standardized in every single state as a board and it's kind of meant for you to test your competency if you're an entry level nurse ready to work. It's it's going to determine if you're safe. It is a hard exam. Like no kidding. Like this is the NCLEX even though Matthew and I have passed it within the least amount of questions, like it's still the hardest exam I've probably ever taken in my life. The questions are super hard. If you don't familiarize yourself with the questions, you, you, you're going to sink because there's select all, all that apply. You know, there's, there's sometimes there's multiple answers to, to the same question, right? And you got to figure out which one's the best. That's like the hardest part for nurses. Like, yeah, you do, do your nursing school exams and they prep you a little bit, but not to that extent where the NCLEX is, is looking for. Oh, yeah. And it's very hard. It's very hard. It, and it's okay. Don't don't get upset yourself. Or if you're in the NCLEX room for you know one and a half hours, two hours, three hours, it doesn't mean you're doing doing bad. It just means that the AI still doesn't know that you're you're. Uh, I guess it's like ninety five percent confidence. Yeah. Correct. Yeah, you might be just like a ninety three percent confidence rate, but the AI has to know that you are answering all the questions that they need you to answer correctly. And sometimes you might see. Uh, the same question you could say, but worded differently, and that's just the AI testing it makes you actually know your stuff. You you have a lot of anxiety when you're like on seventy five and you're like, okay, am I gonna get the next question? Am I gonna keep going? And it was like, okay, you just keep going, just remain your cool, and just you know keep on going. And the best way to ease the anxiety is to go into this exam fully prepared. Don't take it a week after you graduate or a week after you get that email that allows you to take the exam. Like take a good. You have 90 days, so take a solid one to two months to study for it. And don't give yourself a too big of a break in between nursing school and studying for the NCLEX because you want that stuff from nursing school is still fresh in your mind. And the only way it's going to be fresh in your mind is if you keep going over these things over and over again. Because if you take a month off from school before you start studying, you're going to lose a lot of knowledge because you don't work with that that knowledge yet. You don't work in a hospital. You're not, you're not a nurse yet, so you're not going to be going through knowledge. You're not going to be looking at SIADH, should, should we give this fluid or, or that fluid? You're not going to know because you don't work with it. So it's going to go away. If you don't use it, you're going to lose it. Yeah, that, that's why, just like Peter says, the best plan is to start prepping as soon as you finish school. Like there's no need to start preparing for the NCLEX while you're in school because you got like a load, man. You got... You got school to worry about. Maybe you have a job. You got to pass school first. And that's like the key in order to actually take the NCLEX. So as soon as you finish school, just make an effective study plan. You know, take that week off, whatever you have to go get drunk or go on vacation somewhere or take care of whatever you have to. And then just, yeah, bounce into it. Go on the National Council site. I think it's called the NSBN, whatever, right? Mm-hmm. And come up with... And NCSBN. There we go, NS, yeah. I'm not, I can't pronounce it again, so I'm just not going to memorize it right now. It's all good. Or, or you go on couplenurses.com. Exactly. It's going to be there. Get our study guide. And from there, you're going to just create an effective study plan and find out what is on the NCLEX. And also, it's going to give you updates if anything were to change, just like with um, C19. Now you know, hey, we need a mask. We need to maybe register in advance. Maybe some test-taking centers are closed. Mm-hmm. So go on that website. That's going to be like your main source of information to all the information, FAQs that you have on the NCLEX itself. And you guys may be wondering, what did we use to study? Uh, what I used to study is basically my, I didn't really use it too much, but I did have a Kaplan book. But my main means of studying was just UWorld. I just did questions over and over again. Because like we said before, it's just, there's so much books out there. There's so much um, literature, so much written material out there. But each has like their own strategy on how you should kind of figure out what the question is saying. You know, it's not only content they're offering you, but they're also offering like strategies, like how to eliminate, you know, certain questions, which I don't really deem necessary. That's why I prefer like ours, which is just content based. Right. Because if you know the content, you don't need to worry about strategizing on, on which answer is more right than the other one. Yeah. Another one, because you, you know the priorities, you know, A is first, B, C, and then D. You know, yeah, you might see them all, but the NCLEX is always looking for the first one. So if you know the content properly and you just practice the, the NCLEX and, and like the NCLEX question and the wording with UWorld, you will have a lot easier time with compared to somebody that uses all these books and a bunch of different online platforms. Yeah, and just be careful when you're reading the question too. If it's like a negative stem question, check what they're looking for, you know? 
you have to know the content, but they also might trick you. So just be careful and read. And you world that was my success as well. I it was like I think over a thousand questions, and it was a giant Q bank. Every single day, I you know, I, we could we could talk about the study schedule mm-hmm. in a second. But yeah, took a couple hours a day, did all the questions, and then I I used to write down all my rationales. I think that's very important. If you if you're getting questions wrong, you should start asking yourself why you got that question wrong. Start figuring out the rationale, read it over, find out the disease process, find out why that question is wrong. Like. You understand it, why it's wrong. Yeah, you got to make sense of it because if you're not making sense of it now, what makes you think you're going to make sense of it when you're a nurse? Mm. Like shit's only going to get harder. Therefore, figure out the problem at its core, which is now, why aren't I understanding this material? Yeah, Yeah, because maybe you haven't gone over it enough. Maybe you might have missed it in in class that time. Maybe you were just tired that day. But yeah, you got to know the content. If you know the content and know the questions, you will pass the NCLEX. So moving on to our next thing. Probably the one of the most important things is going to be your study, study schedule and the study materials. So me and Matt, um, looking back, I'm not sure how your study schedule was. I know we talked about it before, but but I forgot which what exactly you said. But I worked five days a week, brother. Week. It was freaking tough. Yeah, same. I worked full time as well while I was studying for this. So this is doable, guys. This is doable. You just have to devote some time. That's why it's so important to create a study schedule. And plus, you're, you're out of school now, so no more going to class. You don't have to. Even though you work full time, you're still saving time by not going to class. Yeah. So that time that you devoted to going to class, to see his lectures, to speak to the teachers, that time should be devoted for NCLEX, if not more. Because in theory, or when I look back at my school, I was in school for a solid four to six hours a day, probably at least four days a week, right? So that's a lot of hours. And, and if you were devoting that much to school, you should definitely devote that much to your NCLEX. Take, consider it as like a class, as like a, a NCLEX program for yourself. Yeah, just I kind of like to get into this like crazy, you want to call it a Navy SEAL mindset. I'm just like, all right, this is the goal. I want to pass this. I'm going to take my next one to two months and um, my time is going to revolve around studying and that's it. Just rinse, repeat that shit. Make it a habit. Wake up three to four hours, whatever the case might be. Take your 100 questions a day or go read your two chapters from the NCLEX guide, whatever it is. Nail it down, write some notes, and that's going to depend on what kind of study um, person you are. How to not study person, but how do you retain information, correct? And just keep on getting it. That's how that works, you know? Yeah, and if you if you feel like you're you're falling off, off the wheel or off the wagon, because a lot of times as people, we're good at planning, and we mentally visualize it. We're going to do this tomorrow, and then Wednesday, we're going to do that. Thursday, we're going to do this. We're going to study this on Friday. If you see yourself falling off from that, the best advice that man and I could give you is to actually write this stuff down. Either put it in your phone and a Google Calendar or Apple Calendar, whatever calendar app you're using, or write it down in a, in a physical calendar, but write it down. Write down Monday, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna be studying from let's say 9 a.m. till noon. And you're gonna do a pharmacology that day. And then Tuesday, you're gonna study from, you say you have work, so you're gonna study from let's say 7 p.m. till till 10 p.m. Yeah. And you're gonna do OB 100 questions that, that day. You know, that's a good way to do it because you're crossing off those goals. You visually see yourself crossing off those goals and you're seeing yourself yourself progress on like a visual paper format, not just not just looking at back at things. It's a lot harder for us to visualize ourselves ourselves progressing if you don't have anything to check off or anything to mark off. You know, because life progresses, we do progress, but it's hard to to pinpoint it. Yeah. It's hard to say, hey, I did this. I, I did this last week or I did, I did that the week, the week prior because you just don't recall that and you yeah. don't feel like you really did anything. And that, that's why choosing your study material is important. Everybody has a different learning style or retaining information. And like for me, it's like the notebook, right? I wrote down key topics, rationales for the NCLEX. I've used that notebook to review like the two days prior after I did the questions. And also I use a notebook to this damn day when we do podcasting, when I'm juggling life, juggling this. Like I write down everything I do. Like I'll wake up sometimes and I'll write down, these are the things I have to do. I'll sometimes put it back into my notes mm-hmm. and I'll just, I'll start it like that. So it just, it just depends. But I think a notebook for me, see everybody's different. Like whatever keeps you on track and accountable. Cause I could look back at my notebook and I'm just like, damn, I've been doing a lot of shit. Even though you beat yourself up for it or you might be like, let's just say, you know, because being disciplined is hard. Let's just say you're studying for the last two, three weeks and you're just like, I, I'm not getting this. How am I going to pass this? Because you have negative thoughts when you're taking that NCLEX. Like, just look back at everything you've been doing. Like, you've been through school for four years. Like, you got this. You've been 
this is the moment you've been waiting for. Like you will succeed. Just don't beat yourself up now. The hardest you ever have your whole life right before the biggest exam of your life. Yeah, use, use the study materials you have around you. Don't just read a book and expect to, you know, pass. Use everything for your benefit. Everything's going to have a purpose. Like you use flashcards for like, I'm sure back in pharmacology, you use flashcards. Those are sort of big in pharmacology. Use, use those flashcards. Use sticky notes. Write a few sticky notes. Put them on your fridge. If you finish that sticky note, throw it out. That's one sticky note less you got to worry about. You know, it's just you seeing yourself move from five sticky notes to three sticky notes on, on a fridge. You're already seeing that progress. Notebooks are amazing too. Like Matt said, Matt leaves a notebook. I have like four different notebooks. Sometimes I, I change up my notebook from my phone depending on what I'm doing and accessibility. But notebook I've used all throughout nursing school just because... Uh, well, for myself, uh, I retain stuff better. If let's say I see a PowerPoint, I hear it, and I also write it down. Write it down, yeah. So there's three different things. I'm I'm looking at it. I'm seeing teacher teach PowerPoint is one thing. Number two, I hear a teacher talk about it, and number three, I'm writing it. So there's three ways that I've seen the same information. That's just for me a better better way to to retain it. Uh, I'm you know? not I'm not gonna lie. Flashcards are really good to return retain information. I I was a student in nursing school. They just didn't have time. Like I was working full time, juggling all this, trying to have a life, and I'm just like, I don't have time for flashcards. But when I was doing study groups, which is gonna be our next topic, there was always, always a student that had flashcards, and they came in clutch, man. Mm. And when you review those flashcards, you really retain information. And if you don't get it, you know, right, you just put it away, and you'll retest yourself. Mm. It's such an effective tool, but it takes a lot of front end work to get all those note cards written out. Cause there was like, there was a girl that had stacks, man. She had rubber bands of flash cards walking around. Yeah, and there's, the thing is like, I've had uh, co-students or whatever you want to call them, like people in my nursing school that had a bunch of flash cards, but they were still struggling super hard. Like there was this one, uh, one girl that had, like you said, stacks of, of flash cards for every, everything in a body, OB, PEDS, oncology, hematology, yeah. endocrine, everything. Just straight flashcard, but she would struggle a lot. So it's not for everybody. That's the thing. If flashcards aren't working out for you, ditch them. Do something else. Do a notebook. Maybe you don't need anything visual. Maybe you prefer auditory. Maybe you want to say something. Maybe you want to record yourself reading something and then play it back while you're driving. Like that, that'll that work too. Is find out what, you, what your best method is. I, I used to do that. For, now you just actually helped me remember that. I used to do that for lectures. Mm -hmm. the, the instructor always said, don't record this you know, slip a phone in next to a notebook, record it, and then I was able to, whenever the exam was popping up, I was able to study. Because mm -hmm. I, I was working a freaking part-time job, you know, as a forklift operator. I did not have time to study sometimes. So at work, while I was working, I used to just put on headphones and listen to my damn teacher talk about this nonstop, like twice, three times. And it just like, it just sunk in. Yeah. I'm taking a test and I just hear his voice like, yes, these are beta blockers. <laughs> yeah, really, yeah, because see, I was a CNA, so I couldn't really pop headphones in. So what I would do is, I mean, if my previous manager or whoever is listening to the podcast, you know, I'm sorry for doing this, but it's not bad, but I just had my phone on me and I would do as you rolled when I would, you know, uh, do get what? you said you rolled. Oh, yeah. Man. So when I would get like a patient ready for, you know, for, for the morning, help them get dressed and they really need any help, just like standby supervision. Cause it was rehab center. So we just rehab these, these patients and then like post hip surgeries or hip replacements or knee replacements and then we'll go home. Otherwise they were, they were fine in a health standpoint, but just they had this one mechanical issue that had to be fixed. So while I was just like chilling and watching them get, get ready, I would just answer this question on my, on my phone. I would hammer out like 75 a shift, which is not bad. And then I would come home after the shift and, and do the ones that I got wrong, do them again. Answer, because you wrote does that for you. Yes, it, it does. Yeah. It puts your ones that you got wrong in like a bank of all your wrong ones and then you can retake them later on. But that's what I would do because I didn't have the, the chance to listen to them because I probably could use headphones. I've never probably thought about it. I just used you wrote questions and it was yeah. pretty solid. Yeah, like over, they were in a bathroom. And I, I, I still like there. using headphones now during my nursing shifts, but that's on the hush hush. Yeah. Yeah. So, so study groups. I believe study groups work very well. I haven't done a lot uh, in, in school just because it's like, I don't know, I just... I just didn't do a lot of study groups back then, but now I believe that study groups are really beneficial. You're literally, instead of your one brain thinking and using processing power, there's a group of like four to six of you that are all thinking about the same thing. And there's always one or two people that think about the same idea, same topic in a, in a different sense. So if you're struggling to understand how does, let's say like the, like ACE inhibitors works and you can't figure it out, like, like you know the content, but you're just not clicking. Like it's this memorization and instead of like you actually knowing the whole concept, 
these these people that you study with, they're going to be able to explain it for you in a different sense than your teacher is in a book is. Yeah, everybody has like a unique mm-hmm. learning and study groups are probably the thing that saved my ass from passing nursing school. On top of my notebook and all my, you know, grind and test taking strategies, whatever, like we used to hop into study groups every single day before an exam. It was that helpful. You had the one student that had the flashcards and then everybody has a unique perspective about learning. Of course, you don't want to be in a study group that like somebody's like, slowing you down you know you know that one nursing student that asks a question about everything and doesn't understand it Hmm. well this is why study groups don't become effective because you want to group up you want to figure out who should be in your study group and that's what makes it effective particularly you know yeah and you could you could grind it out man like you learn so much like right before a test i probably picked up all the important material that i need and i was able to pass the test and sometimes i'm just like wow thank god to the study group it helped me remember so much information yeah and one of the probably most effective things about study group is, is accountability if it's a lot harder for you to show up to the library into the study room if you're the only one there compared to if you have a group of three people or four people waiting for you that's there's a huge difference because yeah. because now you now just it's not just like the NCLEX isn't only in your hands now it's in everyone so you're gonna perform just as well as everybody in that group like Matt said, if there's somebody slacking, it's not it's not the best best person to have because you're just gonna slow you down. Like you don't want to have somebody in your group that you, that you have to wait half an hour extra for. That's gonna, gonna gonna cut into your study time. Yeah, and that that's like the next point I want to bring up is like how do you develop an effective study group? You know, there's a, there's a lot of questions we'll go through, and it's um how many people, who, where, and when. So when it comes to how many people, you definitely want to have like four to six people, which is just enough to socialize, go over material. Hey, like having a bigger group is cool. It's awesome. You get to socialize, but it's harder for everybody to contribute just as much. Anything over six people is considered a party, and you can't study in a party. It yeah. doesn't work like that. Yeah, it's science cop, numbers, guys. It's facts. Cops will come to your house for COVID. You know, mm-hmm. if you have more than six people, man. So yeah, yeah. but definitely six people. And then who should you study with? People that that you that you know that are in the, in the same boat. Try to get people that are. If you're gonna study for NCLEX, the group of six people should be studying for NCLEX. Don't have it be. Four of you are studying for NCLEX and the other two are studying for their, their GRE or whatever or doing something else. Be, be a cohesive group with the same goals in mind. Like you don't want to bring your cousin over and have him study for his, for his calculus, calculus exam because it's on the same date as your NCLEX. It's not going to work. Yeah. You guys can get, get distracted. And you don't want to really, once you have this group developed of four or six people, you don't want to really bring in anybody new. Because that's going to kind of be distracting. If you're going to bring in somebody new, have, it, have them be new for a long term. So if you're going to bring them for one session, don't even waste your time bringing them. Because this is going to, gonna derail the, the whole the whole session because everyone's gonna try to get to know him it's gonna be more room for for socialization less room for work but if you're bringing somebody in that's also going to study for the for the NCLEX he's gonna be there more than one session that's a good idea because guess what yeah you might have seven people now but still he might bring a different atmosphere to the group and yeah exactly and it's not cruel just it is what it is that's what you need to do to take your test so it's business pick your poison it is business like the way I did it too is after you know we graduated we had it was me and my two buddies, okay, Matt, Neil, and me, and we rented out study groups or like a, a study hall in the library every single night. Came up, met up for like th- you know three, four hours plus, six sometimes, whatever we had to do. Brought a bunch of snacks and just like worked it out, man. It was literally like a work shift. Like came in there, we knew what's going on. Everybody drank a freaking, brought a large Dunkin' Donuts cup, a uh, cup of coffee, or we brought a box of joe and we just like handle business Mm -hmm. and that's where that's where the where comes in you know you choose your best environment where you think you won't be distracted at least you know libraries are cool i think now during c19 it kind of makes things a lot more harder so i don't maybe easy yeah it it depends it could go both ways because now things can be less full so maybe you're more inclined to get like a room i'm not sure how universities are if they're still allowing people to use their study, study rooms i don't I don't see why they shouldn't, but I understand with the laws going on and the governors, you know, they're gonna be less less inclined to allow this for you. It's kind of goofy where you're not supposed to meet up with people because you could spread infection. But to be honest, man, it's the NCLEX guide. It's, I'm not. It's the NCLEX. It's standing in front of you. If you have to sacrifice work studying studying with a couple of friends, I would do so. Yeah, go to someone's basement. Do it outside if you want. Like I know for me, majority of my college career, I spent countless hours in Starbucks. I'd always either go to Starbucks or I'll rent out a study room in a library. That's would, where I would hang out all the time. You were the gold car member, huh? I was a gold car. I'm probably still am. Probably they probably have my like my name on the wall. Like, hey, we took this much money from this guy. This this nursing student, you know. But yeah, I liked I liked Starbucks, even though sometimes it could be a little loud. I'd pop my headphones in, 
And I just, I just grind it out because just like the en- environment, like atmosphere, because if you, this is a coffee shop, so people are buying coffee because they got to be more productive, right? So, so there was always that mindset of like productivity or accomplishments going on in Starbucks. It's like that Starbucks atmosphere. And that's what we used to remember. Mm-hmm. Me and Peter used to write blog posts all the time. And we literally went to Starbucks, even though it's loud, it's that, it's that atmosphere. Mm-hmm. Everybody's on their grind and it kind of gets you sucked into the same thing. And I remember we used to always get a coffee, a cold brew, and then we write a blog post or two, and then we reward ourselves with the uh, like the the lollipop cake. Ooh, the cake, cake pops, pops, bro. Those, those are fire. Good. Yeah, that, that's another thing. If you like, if you like to snack, study and reward yourself with like a snack. Like, I mean, you can you can train yourself to be like a dog if you really want. So like, hey, if I answer hundred questions, then I could get this treat. Then I could get the like this cookie. Like, you can reward yourself that way. That, that's not that's not bad. It'll work. Like, it works hundred percent. It, it's. Proven on psychology, mm. that's what, you know, it takes. Yeah. So when should you study? So when? Every fucking minute that you have, you should, you should be studying. On your, on your breaks, study. It's going to suck. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be boring, but you got to get this done. Like, you're not, you didn't do four years of school just to, you know, bitch out on this last exam. Like, no, it's not, it's not how it works. If, if that is how it works, then you're looking at life wrong and you're not going to get anywhere with, with your life. But you should study. Every, every chance you get, you should study. Yes, devote times to breaks, but... You know, there's don't make sure your breaks aren't longer than your actual study sessions. Like devote at least three hours a day, at least like four or five times a week for these next two months. It's two months, guys. It's two months out of the rest of your life. You could literally grow some balls, study last two months, put down the phone, stop talking to people, you know, tell your boyfriend, your girlfriend, hey, I'm going to, I'm going to take, I'm going to be on a low low for now because I got to study for the exam because this is my future. Do it. Get your one year of experience, and you can become a travel nurse. Most of our there listeners don't have balls, bro. It's okay. I'm oh, kidding. Oh, damn. So, uh, what are the labia? Labia minora, <laughs> labia majora. Shut you up, know, low key. <laughs> There's no balls. Uh, I, I was going to continue and say something else, but you kind of put yourself in that hole to say all that. Someone's got to do it. So, number one thing to your success as well, on top of having your guide, is keeping the eye on the prize, right? Keeping focus, right? A lot of people feel like they're busy and they're doing a lot of shit, but really you're not doing much. You're just busy with everything that consumes your time, which is, you know, you have to go to the grocery store, but now you check your newsfeed, Facebook, and you're replying to people's DMs. Now you're checking this. We have all these apps that are constantly grabbing our attention. The question is, is are you willing to cancel out all that noise for a month or two or limit your screen time, whatever it is, so you could get the job done? And you know the job, the past and the NCLEX. That is... That one job that you will have once you graduate school, you better hammer it down. Yeah, if you were to ask me what are like my personal recommendations or takeaways from, from the NCLEX, it's probably going to be one, devote some time to this, at least three to four hours a day. Like you're out of school, devote that time that you would devote to class, use that towards NCLEX, use that towards benefit. Two would be definitely put down on social media. Yeah, take a look at it once in a while, but you don't got to constantly stare at it because like Matt said, it's going to take away a lot of your time. And the third one is probably the study environment. You go somewhere quiet if you have to. Go somewhere where you only go there to do this work. If you go to, to the library, get a study room, and that study room is devoted to only you studying. Not devoted to making phone calls, not devoted to paying bills, not devoting to, to, to your Venmo, not devoted to catching up with friends. Like that's your office, that's your space, that's your little study temple, and that's all you do for that three hours. Set alarm clocks. Put in your schedule and just get it done. There's there's no secret plan besides just study it. And a probably secret plan is probably get the cup of nurses NCLEX study guide or prep and study guide and probably you wrote. If I were to use two pieces of content, if I was to go back to four years in your, in nursing school and I was just to use two pieces of content, I would definitely use you wrote and I would definitely use our study guide. Yeah, good content. I'm telling you guys, good content. Until we get um, a bank for ourselves mm-hmm. and we sell it, right? That'd be pretty cool. Yeah. I, I would love to develop that. I would love to help people as much as possible and by doing this creating this that's the way to do it so be it also another piece of advice i would say and we talk me and peter talk about this all the time right is nutrition nutrition dieting healthy eating like on top of you studying and busting your ass make sure you're getting your sleep because that's going to freaking refresh your mind like you need it you need sleep to store information and you should be kind of trying to somewhat eat healthy i know you're maybe a college student you've been you know Doing freshman your, 15. Freshman 15. Turn to the, to the senior 30. Ramen, whatever you're doing, just like clean up your diet a little bit because it's going to make a difference. If you're binging on all these sugary, starchy carbs, like you're going to have crashes. You're going to be miserable. You're not going to have that long, sustaining energy. Like all these little hacks like add on to 
becoming that super soldier to pass this damn test, to be honest. And guess, guess what? You're building good habits too, so it's going to be going to help you in the long run. Because I'm not going to lie, like me being able to pass this NCLEX and doing everything in nursing school, it kind of like set m- myself up for, for success for doing everything I'm doing now. Mm-hmm. Like that, like the grit, the determination, all the stuff after the perseverance, like that all carried over from nursing school into like my everyday life. It's cool to look at because like when you're in nursing school, you look forward to finishing, passing the NCLEX and becoming a nurse. And once you actually pass the NCLEX, you're just like, holy shit. I just did four years at nursing school and I'm finally a nurse. Like that just shows you how your work ethic, your grind basically pays off. It pays off and makes you successful and, and it actually rewards you because it's been four years for your ass going to clinical, going to school, passing these exams, failing some exams, the stress, the worry, the anxiety, and you finally get your reward. It you feels finally good. get that license. It feels great because it you learn, because when you guys are in school, you're in your 20s. So you still haven't really found out the benefits of like long-term goals. Because long-term goals set in mostly like when you're probably later 20s, early 30s, 40s. That's when you realize that, hey, like long-term goals are, are, are the way to go. It's hard for you to realize long-term goals as a teenager or in your like late teens, early 20s. It's hard to realize those long-term goals because you've only been alive for like 20-something years, you know? People have that taken advantage of long-term goals usually like in their 30s, 40s because they've been through all that. They know what's worth in the long run. That's why a lot of times our you know, attention spans are short because we like the short-term goals and that's why this is so rewarding. This is like your, your first long-term goal reward because passing high school and going to college, some people see that as like a long-term goal, but it's not a really long-term goal because you have to do it. It doesn't matter if you feel like going to school. If you don't, you, your parents are going to push you to go through high school, right? It's not really your goal. You never said... You never walked in a senior year and said, all right, by the end of the year, I'm going to be a senior grad. Life is great. Long-term goals are finally being accomplished. Yeah, no, you're just like, God damn, I got to wake up at seven o'clock to go on this damn bus for 20 minutes to drop me out of high school. And like, you know, I don't even like half these people. Brian, you're throwing a party Saturday. Yeah. yeah you're going like, to be there. Right. Like, like, like that kind of little thing is like, you don't comprehend the, the massive long-term benefit you're getting from going to high school. Right. And Hell this yeah. actually puts it into perspective. Like, hey, four years finally paid off. Now I can make some money. Right. And it feels good. Like once you finish, you're paying off your debt. You kind of, I see a lot of people purchasing some new car. Traveling. You know, traveling. You got to reward yourself. I get it. You guys deserve it. Whoever's about to take the NCLEX or just took it, like power to you. Like go spoil yourself a little bit because nursing school like sucked ass, man. It was demoralizing. I know people cried. I oh, probably, yeah. I probably shed a tear here and there. Probably not, but. Nah, I probably didn't. But, but yeah, and the cool thing about it is nursing is so broad that you go through clinical, you pass your NCLEX, and you want to be an ICU nurse. And you go to ICU, you're just like, damn, ICU, not for me. You go to MedSurge, bam, I, I love MedSurge. And you try ER, like, damn, I really love, love ER. And guess what? You get your first experience, you find, find a little niche that you like. And next thing you know, after a year, year and a half, you think about doing travel nursing. And travel nursing is awesome because nursing and the medical field is the only field you could really do an X amount of days in a row and then be done with your work week. Like, as nurses, work three twelves and then we're off for the next six days. Like that, that's amazing. Feels and, great. And throw travel into it where you could travel for three to six months up to a year at a, like, a, like a different state. And get paid and more money. Get paid more money. And you could, and all you have to do is work three night shifts, three day shift, three night shift, 12 hour, hours each, and then rest is all you. That's like an amazing career, especially for somebody that's our age and like their, their mid their twenties are coming off of school. Like we are in a perfect field because once you start getting up in age in those early thirties, late twenties, people want to start having kids start, start settling down. You don't think about yourself as much in the future as you do now, right? So this is like the perfect opportunity. Because let's say you wanted, you were thinking, you're like in Chicago, like I hate this weather. I always wanted to live in LA. Like LA seems like it's my vibe. And you go do a nursing contract, six months, uh, maybe LA wasn't your vibe. Like, yeah, you made some money, but now you kind of learn how the city works, a lot of traffic, you know, you you walk to places more than than you drive and you're not really feeling that. And you go to New York and you really like New York. That allows you that area of, of, of exploration. Yeah, it Hell might, yeah. yeah, it might take away like three to four years of like your social life and settling down, but at least you're gonna settle down where you want to, and you've explored the thing that, that you wanted. Because there's a bunch of nurses that I used to work with, they're like damn, I wish I would have done travel nursing, but now, sorry girl, you can't because you got three kids and a husband. You know, you should have <laughs> probably done that. You know, five years ago. Did you say thing. sorry, girl? <laughs> you know, I didn't say that. <laughs> I know, but, you know, know. I actually probably no, my dumbass, I probably did, dude. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, so and yeah, that's just, that's, that's why course. like you're mentioning all this. It's like people say that their years are in college, like enjoy it. Those are going to be the best years in your life. But you know what? I call bullshit on that because right now 
I'm 26. I'm living my life. Mm -hmm. And I have been living my life. And it feels amazing. So just because you're getting older doesn't mean life is getting worse or you're degrading. Like, it's amazing, man. I'm doing what I love. I'm doing this. We're traveling. We're exploring. Mm -hmm. Doing our threes. We get our fair share of bullshit just like anybody else. Life is hard, but we're going through it. Yep. All right, guys. Make sure you pick up a copy if you're a nursing student or maybe you have a granddaughter or, you know, an, an aunt or a cousin that's studying for nursing school. You should maybe get them the Cup of Nurses NCLEX Prep and Study Guide on CupofNurses.com because it's really, we devote a lot of time to this, 160 pages, page, pages of great content and you can feel free to email us, reach out to us if you have any questions, if you caught some grammar errors, you know, we'll, we'll you know, we'll, we'll give you a shout out for catching our grammar errors or anything. Yeah, but we'll, we, we'll we had, a, yeah, we had a, people look through it. Um, we've, We've been through a few nurses already, and, and they liked it. They actually read it, Pastor and Clex. Not just solely based off this, but also using your world, but they really enjoyed the content that we have provided for them. And ultimately, we would love for people to take a look at this, grab a copy, give us some feedback. Let us know what you think. If you pass the NCLEX because of this, shit, I want to know. We want to know. Mm. We want to post you up on Instagram or something about this. So give us feedback once you purchase it and make an effort to study with it. We would love to know more about it. Yep. Thank you for tuning in, guys. And if you're studying for the NCLEX, now's a good time to turn off the podcast and keep on studying. Good luck. Peace out.